that you can share with the people that you love. Hear The Appleseed every Thursday at noon, right here on the information and cultural beacon of the Four Corners, KSJE, Farmington, New Mexico. Hello, I'm Antonia Gonzalez with National Native News. Tune in to our headline news service for stories about indigenous communities across the country and around the world. Hear about top concerns facing Native nations. Tribal history, language, and culture is also part of indigenous life. Check out our headline news service to learn more. Tune in here for National Native News. Weekdays at 5.55 on KSJE Farmington. KSJE is supported by San Juan Regional Medical Center, here to meet your urgent and emergent medical needs, whether they are COVID-19 related or not. Medical emergencies happen when you least expect them. Whether it's a stroke, heart attack, illness, or injury, San Juan Regional Medical Center's caregivers are here to provide care to you and your loved ones. Find out more online at sanjuanregional.com. Ten minutes past eight o'clock. It's Friday morning, January 22nd, 2021. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott Micklin, and thanks for tuning in to KSJE 90.9 FM over the air here in San Juan County, New Mexico, 103.3 FM over the air in Durango, Colorado, and streaming everywhere from our website, ksje.com. Welcome also to our viewers who are watching this visual radio program. We're streaming live this morning to the KSJE YouTube channel, our Facebook page, and our Twitter account. We're glad that you are with us, however you found your way to KSJE this morning. Welcome aboard, everybody. Coming up in the next few moments, we're going to be talking about the innovative CLEAR program here at San Juan College. CLEAR is an acronym that stands for Career, Life, Engagement, and Readiness Program. And we'll be learning more about that in the next few moments, right? here on KSJE, so stay tuned for that. Then next hour, Mick Hess will be here roving with the arts, and Mick is going to be playing some more Broadway tunes featuring the singer that you see on the screen right now. That's Bryn Torfel. He'll be singing some great Broadway music for us coming up this morning at 9.06 on KSJE. East. So that is coming up later on. And then don't forget, at noon today, it's the Cop Shop with the Farmington Police Department every second and fourth Friday of the month. It is uh, the Cop Shop with FPD. You can listen or watch today at 12.06 on KSJE, and then at 12.30, it's our storytelling program, suitable for all ages, of course, Quentos, Hana, and Tales, stories that are read and, and produced with our partners over at the Farmington Public Library. You can hear that coming up today at 12.30 on KSJE. Don't forget, of course, we invite you to connect with us on all forms of social media, in addition to Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. You can check us out on Instagram as well. And let's talk about the weather forecast for today. Outside, it is cloudy and 30 degrees in Farmington at the moment. We are expecting a mostly cloudy day today, some increasing clouds. Chance of uh, rain shower too with a high of 46 this afternoon. More chances for rain or snow overnight with a low of 34. And then take a look, next several days, chances for rain or snow in the forecast. 47 for high on Saturday, 41 on Sunday, 36 snow showers in the forecast on Monday, 33 with more snow showers on Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. And overnight lows getting colder as well from an overnight low tonight, mid-30s down to the teens by Tuesday night. So some of the snow may stick around for a while. We'll have to wait and see what happens. But let me introduce my guest who is with us this morning to talk about, as I mentioned, this innovative program called CLEAR here at San Juan College. Kimber Mordecki is joining us uh, this morning remotely. And good morning. Good to see you. Thank you for being here. Good morning. How are you? I am doing well, thank you. And uh, thank you for, for being here, as I mentioned, to talk about this really great program. And give us a little bit of a, a background for those who maybe aren't familiar with, with CLEAR. But Kimber, you've been involved with this from its very beginnings, right? And, uh, and tell us a little bit when it's all started. So we started the first cohort um, in August 2019. And we um, started our second cohort this past August. And so every August where you will start a new cohort, um, we 
are a program that is designed for students with disabilities. And, you know, we want them to get that world-class education, just like the college, um, you know, in their vision and, and really gear them towards getting that independent, you know, knowing who they are, what they want to do, and really gear them towards a, a job and a career. Right. And so right now we have 23 and we're, we're going strong, um, even through COVID. Uh, right now we're doing remote. We um, meet two, three times every day. And, you know, sometimes it's just to keep in touch, check on everyone, make sure we're all doing okay. Um, but first cohort, we use um, Skills USA curriculum. It is a national recognized curriculum. And the first cohort, they have all finished. And so now we're just trying to get those internships. Um, we're at the part of the program. We kind of had to postpone. <laughs> Um, well, so with the, because of the, places. right, and postponed because of the uh, the pandemic, I would say, right? It, that was in, really out of your control, certainly, but that's where you are, right? Yes. Gotcha. That's where we are. We're, and, we're doing good. Right. And so, as I mentioned, the acronym CLEAR, um, which is really interesting, stands for this Career Life Engagement and Readiness Program for for your students. And so that is kind of the whole idea, right? You are are helping these students to kind of get ready to get out there and maybe find it, find a job, find out what they would like to do, what they can do, those types of things, correct? Correct. You are absolutely right. Um, we have some of the most talented um, individuals. And, you know, I just want to point out, there's always little silver linings. And just because we're home and we're doing Zoom, we have seen some growth. Um, it, it's been very, very inspirational for all of us. And, and so, you know, we just want to, we want to provide that opportunity. And, and that's great. When you, when you talk about growth, Timber, talk to me a little bit about what, what, that, what that means, what, what you've seen with your, with your students, with these cohorts. Oh, goodness, there's so many. Right. You know, number one for them, um, we start a class and, and then we have a room full of friends. I mean, immediate friends. And, and that is really neat to watch the, um, those bonds and the connections and, um, you know, confidence. Confidence is huge. And I think some of the biggest growth has just been those confidence. You know, they, they start to feel like, oh, I can do this. I want to do this. Um, it, it's that, the motivation that starts coming out. Um, which their motivation is, is unbelievable. Some of the hardest working um, students I've ever worked with. So um, and the, it's, it's been exciting. Right. And, and the fact that they have been kind of putting up with this whole pandemic and, and still getting together with you, as you mentioned, you connect with them maybe multiple times in a, in a day to check in. And to, and to see how your students are, are doing, that's a big commitment from, from you as well, I would think. Well, I don't know. Like I said, we're all friends. It, it, we, we get on. We, we want to talk. We want to see each other. Um, you can call it a commitment. It, it's just my passion. <laughs> well, then that's important as well. But I think it's, it's great. And for a yeah. lot of these students, I would think you mentioned some of their creativity, um, some of the drive they have. Uh, and I'm wondering if maybe they've ever been allowed to to express that or to follow some of those um, likes and, and interests that they that they might have in this type of a, of a setting. That's kind of unique to the CLEAR program, isn't it, to kind of give them some tools to explore and see what they may like to, to get involved with? Oh, it has been. Um, it's been great. And, you know, just recently we had a, a student. It was just something he was doing. On his own, he was keeping track of COVID, um, the, the statistics. And he did such an amazing job. We created a video. We, um, and then we turned it in and we submitted it to the uh, student research conference that they did. And he won second place in his, 
his category and, and it was again. so uplifting and he is so proud that's amazing <laughs> we're seeing a little bit of the uh maybe the zoom uh class that you have with with your clear students of course as they are meeting and throughout the day and we want to say hello to all of them because i know they're big fans of the show so thank you all for for watching and, and tuning in and, and we're going to see some of that presentation and so talk to me a little bit about uh, Jacob, that's Jacob Sharp, your student who uh, who did this presentation, right? Jacob Sharp, what a what a unique individual he is. He's he's special to me. I've had him for years, and um, so like I said, he was. We go home, you know, we get sent home in March. Something that he likes to do. He likes statistics. He likes numbers. He's phenomenal with them. Um, he knows everyone's birthdays. And so what he did, it was his way of coping. Um, it was just something he enjoyed doing. He started out coloring. And he would just color on strips of paper every day and keep those statistics. And since then, he kept them for San Juan County and, the, and New Mexico. And then he would do a map of the entire United States. And he colors it himself. And this was to track the uh, coronavirus as it spread across the country since the very beginning, as you mentioned, from last March. And, and he is still doing this. And he is month, month by month, he was updating his map, as you said, and hand coloring in all the, all the 50 states to let us know kind of where the uh, coronavirus was, um, depending on how, how bad it was in some different states. I'm showing mm -hmm. for our video audience kind of the scale he used about some of the uh, the numbers. So again, as things got um, from from zero cases to one to 19 yellow and things got over 500,000, we see kind of the red speckled um, the, the design red there. Droplet. The red, yeah, <laughs> on, on the map. And so you've allowed us to share a little bit of his presentation this morning, which I think is, is fantastic. And so I wanna play that for our audiences and kind of let them kind of experience what what Jacob put together and, and what got so many uh, accolades here. So why don't we listen to a little bit of his presentation here on KSJE. Here we go. Okay. August, here we go. Well, guess what? Three states are in bad red droplet shape because it's half a million confirmed cases since then. Um, wow. Jacob is describing the map for a radio audience that we are seeing. Okay, do we really want to see the next one? <laughs> we have to. <laughs> it's monthly from January 11th till tomorrow. Oh, okay, let's see it. All right, here comes September. seeing more gray yep all around the east coast okay october 11th okay november 11th oh no Illinois and New York got it too. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see. December 11th. They're not going to like it, but here we go. Three, two, one. Ooh, not the black. Oh. Georgia and Ohio has that, so that means as of now, Seven, let me, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven states have the red droplets because of 500,000. Three states as of now are in millions. Oh my goodness, Jacob. All right. And there you go. A little bit from uh, one of the CLEAR students, part of the Career Life Engagement and Readiness Program here at San Juan College, uh, Jacob Sharp. Kimber Mordecki, the director of the program, is my guest this morning. And uh, 
it's pretty amazing that he uh, tracked that. And again, we just showed a little small clip of uh, of his report. But I mean, he's been doing that and continues to do that since um, since December. You were telling me, Kimber, right? He's still he's still updating that that map, right? Still updating. We we let him show us. Um, you know, every couple of weeks or so, we go through, and the visual is amazing. It is so powerful for us, and. And so you could see some of the students taking pictures. Right. Um, they're very supportive of each other, and it is, it's really fun to watch. That's amazing. And again, it shows, I mean, and he, he seems to have a thing for geography, for sure, being able to call out oh, all yeah. those states. I, some of them I still can't identify, but, um, right. but able to track some of those and, and to show us kind of how the cases uh, grew in, uh, from state to state and kind of, you know, from, from the very beginnings, of course, to where we are where we are today. And so, um, so as you mentioned, this presentation was selected um, by another organization, right? Um, it was. It was the, um, I, I can't remember, I believe through the Hip Hub, um, that, but there was a student research conference. We had been That's in it. contact with, with Miss Danielle Sullivan, and, and she was amazing in, in helping us do this and, and show um, just the the amazing work that he's done that's true so great people great people at the college that we're constantly connecting with um we're we're, we're growing we're networking and and we we just really really want to provide more and more opportunities for everyone out there that that needs that needs it and wants it sure sure <laughs> And so with the CLEAR program, Kimber, tell, talk to us a little bit about the different um, semesters and the different classes that, that these students are, are, are going through. And then I want to ask you, too, about these internship opportunities that you're looking for um, this time of year. Thank you. Yeah, so the CLEAR, we, we focus on, you know, four outcomes. It's the personal skills, wellness skills, technical skills, and occupational skills. And so, you know, within that, we're, we're working on those soft skills. We're talking about, you know, the, the little, the time management, learning to be on time, um, taking responsibility, advocating for yourself. And so, you know, we, we kind of work on all of that all the time. Um, first semester, we really get to know each other. We start to look at our strengths. You know, what do we think we want to do? Our, our four occupation or certificate programs that we're offering right now are food service, office skills, building and maintenance, and stocking and merchandising. Um, and we hope to grow that eventually as well, add more. And so right now, you know, um, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we really, really focus on that holistic um, aspect of, of teaching. And so as well-rounded as, as we can be, um, you know, depending on if we're home on remote, on Zoom. <laughs> right. Uh, right. We're constantly working on all those things that are just going to make them successful and, and proud of who they are. And um, so, so each semester, we, we really just push a little bit more and start gearing them into those areas that are you know, their talent, their expertise, or something that they are so good at. Um, and so that's that's really what we were doing. Right. And like you said, you know, uh, we are starting, we had to kind of postpone due to COVID. Um, so our first cohort, we are at the point where we're needing to find those internships, you know, where they can go job shadow, they can learn and do the hands-on learning. Um, we are looking for employers within the community to uh, work with us, possibly um, employ the students that do the internship. You know, our main goal is when they leave, they have a job. Right. And are you looking for maybe businesses that follow some of these career tracks that you mentioned earlier? That seems like it would be a great fit for, for these students who are already kind of le leaning in that direction towards that possible job path to maybe get a job shadow at one of those types of businesses, correct? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're, we're looking for, for all areas. 
Um, but yeah, we would really like to focus on the, the four strong areas, the, those broader areas, food service, office skills. Um, and so we're, we're just really wanting, um, you know, we, wanna, we want the community to come together and, and we're, we want this to be a community effort. And so we would love, if you want to reach out, if you would be interested, um, we would love to start getting a, a nice partnership with some of these wonderful businesses around town. And, of course, during this time, the idea is that some of these internships, all of these internships could be created and, and built to be COVID safe and, and to be either remote or, or some other precautions put in place um, so that the business feels comfortable, the student feels comfortable, you feel comfortable, all those different things. All of this is, is on the table and, and certainly flexible, right? Right. At this, you know, flexibility is something we do well. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, yes, uh, we're, you know, we might try to get some there on campus if we can. Um, but, you know, if we can reach out and, and get into the community, that, that's our goal. Right. And you've got how many, how many students? Remind us again how many were in this first cohort who are ready to, to get out there and, and maybe get an internship and, and maybe get their, their first job? So the first cohort, we are at 13 students, and so we're, we're lurking, looking for 13 positions. Okay. <laughs> um, the second cohort, we have 10, and so we have more coming up, and um, so 23 total that we have right now. Gotcha. That, that we are, we're already looking ahead. <laughs> and remind us if folks are listening and we have business owners and, and other folks who may be watching and listening to the program, if they think they'd like to work with you and, and, and already I mean, we're thinking of places where these students could come in and job shadow or remotely job shadow, how can they get in touch with you, Kimber? What's the best way to, to do that, to, to take this to the next, to the next level? Uh, absolutely. Um, you can email me at my email and then it, M-O-R-D-E-C-K-I-K -K at San Juan College .edu. Um, You may also call the phone number. It is 566-3241. Very good. And, uh, and again, this is something that you are looking for uh, this semester for these students. And then um, there'll be another cohort of, of new students starting this, this fall. Is, and is that all filled up? Are you still looking for students to maybe join the, uh, the third cohort of clear we're always looking come on come see us um yes we we are ready you can apply now you can go ahead go to san juan college edu and apply um if you go to san juan college edu slash clear you can go to our page and there are step-by-step -step directions and as I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the program, Kimber, this is a pretty unique and innovative program. It's been here now for, for a few years at San Juan College, but are there other similar programs across the country, or, or is yours one of the very first that, that we are seeing at higher education? So there are a few around. The closest one um, that is, you know, comparable to us would be down in Roswell and a fantastic program. I've had a couple of my own students, previous students, graduate from there. And, you know, but it's far away. Sure. And so we wanted to be able to be closer and provide something for the four corners. And that's a great point, that, that, that you are open to students that are not maybe just in the, in the city of Farmington proper, but the, the Four Corners region, certainly closer than, than Roswell, for heaven's sakes. And so um, folks from Durango, folks from Cortez, this is a, this is a program that could, that could help their students as well, right? Their, their kids, their young adults. Oh, absolutely. We've been in contact with different organizations um, before covid and uh, but we have a lot of interest and so hopefully you know once we can get through this then we can get back on track um, and be back at campus we miss seeing everybody 
Well, we miss seeing you. <laughs> Speaking as someone who's who's here on campus, I can definitely tell you that. And uh, because it's great to see your students kind of going around, and that's part of, I know, what they have done is to kind of go on little mini field trips even here on campus when we were able to do that safely and come here to the radio station or go down to the food service and check out the cafeteria and the kitchens and, and all the other places on campus to really kind of um, excite them about these career opportunities and these career paths that they are that they are thinking about right oh yes we we do a lot of visiting yes um, yeah. your 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 space is is the favorite <laughs> oh well, that's kind of you to say because I don't see my messy office but that's okay <laughs> But I'm glad that they uh, that they like coming here, and we love having them. So that that's great. And and just in our final minutes together, Kimber, I want to just you know have you explain to us just how important it is for these students. I mean, these are students with some disabilities, and and how great that they're able to come to campus and and do some of the things like like everyone else who comes to campus to uh, to go to class and and learn new things and explore different ideas. And that's what San Juan College is is all about. But how great to have to have them being able to to be here remotely with with other students learning and growing like like everybody else it really is what it's all about right that's what it's all about um you're right you know the same opportunity and, and as you can see some of them go above and beyond and they're going to shine <laughs> right and and that's a great point too that jacob's uh, project that we shared just a little bit of this morning. I asked you if it was extra credit or just an assignment. And you're like, nope. He just did it on his own, which is uh, which is amazing, right? It's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. terrific. Well, you've got some great students in your in the Clear program, and we hope to find some more. And others will sign up. And uh, and again, businesses, if you have some opportunities or would like more details from Kimber about how to maybe uh, open up a job shadow opportunity, um, could be probably remote at this point for some of these Clear students. Please contact Kimber. Would you repeat your email address and phone number for everybody again, Kimber? One more time for us, please. Sure. My email is m o r d e. C K I K at San Juan College dot edu and the phone number 505 566 3241. There you go. Well, Kimber, thank you very much for joining me this morning and to all the clear students who are watching. We miss you guys and thank you very much and keep on keeping on. You guys are doing great. Thank you, Kimber. Thank you. You're welcome. Stay Have a well. great day. You too. Thank you very much. That is Kimber Mordecki. She is the director of the CLEAR program here at San Juan College, the Career, Life, Engagement, and Readiness program. My guest here on KSJE. KSJE is supported by the University of Denver Graduate School of Social Work, Four Corners program. The program is accepting applications for the Advanced Standing MSW program starting this summer 2021. Students with a bachelor's degree in social work are eligible for the one-year program. Complete an application by January 15, 2021 and the application fee is waived. Stipends in child welfare and opioid workforce expansion and Native American tuition support to eligible students are available. Find out more from Janelle.doty, D O U G H T Y, at du.edu or at D 